In the medical device industry, there's a phrase, uh, IQ, OQ, PQ. It gets work, uh, discussed when talking about uh, process development. And it, it's a big area that I've worked in, uh, corporate-wise, as well as in, the, uh, in my consulting life. And I just want to briefly describe that if it's something you're not familiar with, or even if you are, how do you approach that? What things should you consider? And obviously, in a, a brief video, only so much depth we can hit. Um, but the, the first thing, the IQ, is really talking about, do you have the right equipment? You bought something, you had specs for it, um, did you, or the, the supplier had specs for it, did you get what you asked for? And, it, and what is the baseline of the electrical or air supply or whatever else um, that's um, a part of that equipment uh, that is part of that original setup? What's that baseline? Um, what were the results from the leveling of the equipment, if that's important? Things like that. So do you have the right equipment? Was it installed right? And with that kind of baseline, if you have issues, um, you understand the baseline, you can verify the equipment set up right. If it matches the baseline, then that's not one of the issues. Um, but also, if you move this across the hallway, is that really the same air supply, the electrical supply? Certainly, it's got to be rebalanced and does that balancing and any of the torsion that happens in the equipment screw up anything else? Um, the, the, just, again, the mounting of the sensor or whatever else, it could be impacted by a move. Uh, so it, it's good to get that baseline of what you have for equipment. Really pretty simple, but you want to be as comprehensive as appropriate to make sure you understand what that baseline condition is of your machine, and then you can build from there. The second thing, the OQ. Uh, so IQ is installation qualification. OQ is operational qualification. And in OQ, um, the, conceptually, we're trying to establish the limits of that right equipment generally with the process that we're trying to perform. So if you, um, and it's just how does it perform at the limits? And not the spec limits, but the, I'll call the limits of the machine. Uh, so at high temperature, low temperature, high speed, low speed, how, how does this thing work and what kind of um, process outputs are we able to achieve with it with some, usually with a given design, but it could be uh, a pretty flexible um, processing type evaluation as well. Um, and so I'm cautious of using just the spec limits or intended spec limits for two reasons. Um, one reason is, um, let's say that you're, you're producing a part that's you know, three by three inches or something fairly small, but the machine's capable of going six by six. Well, if you, if you explore it, the operational qualification three by three as soon as you go four by four, you gotta redo it. And then if you go five by five, you gotta redo it again. If you can start off, understand the limits to a six by six uh, layout, uh, then a lot of that homework is done, uh, and then you can move on. You can kind of use a gen so somewhat generic OQ um, on your process uh, to, to fit a lot of different applications. Uh, and then the last thing, the PQ uh, uh, performance qualification is for uh, the, base, the capability of that particular um, process for a particular design. Uh, so you start talking about process capability and just understanding what it really does within the window of intended operation. Uh, you need to explore the limits here because if you go just outside those specs, the FDA or any customer is going to be concerned, do you fall off a cliff or is it a gradual decay in performance? You know, why did you pick that limit? Um, and so we've explored what happens if you go past the limits, spec limits up above in the OQ, and then we say, well, if we are within our window, what happens in there? And there's a lot of strategies on how to execute that. Well, that's, that's the basic um, uh, approach. And you evaluate things that may or may not be important here, and then that's the justification, maybe simplify the PQ, number of variables that are involved. If you understood that speed is very stable between three and four setting, uh, but you've explored from two to six, but your PQ is going to be three to four. If that's incredibly stable, maybe that you just lock that in at three and a half because of the long-term stability that you saw in the OQ work. At least there's opportunity to do that in, in certain situations. There may be other things that do vary more and aren't as fixed and rigid as a setting. 
or maybe you need to explore some of those like temperature fluctuations or, or something like that because um, those would be experienced down the road as well. So that's kind of the flavor of an IQ, OQ, PQ. Uh, do you have the right equipment? Understand the limits of the process in general, that equipment in general when it's being run. This is without running the equipment. This is with running the equipment. And this is with running the equipment basically within your uh, product spec to produce things within the product spec as well. So within the process window for that, that specific product. If ITO, QPQ uh, is something you're interested in, developing and being really strategic in how you set those levels up to be most efficient and accelerate your development, give us uh, contact us here at Perry Solutions. We'd love to help you set up a strategy and execute uh, so that you can accelerate your time in the market in the medical industry. And frankly, it works in other industries equally as well.